Welcome to our latest video, The Ultimate Guide to Expatriating from the United States. In this video, I'm going to be discussing what expatriation is, what its consequences are, pre-expatriation planning, actually expatriating, as well as post-expatriation planning. First, let's talk about what expatriation is. Expatriation is the process of renouncing your United States citizenship or abandoning your permanent resident status, or green card, as it's commonly known, if you are considered a long-term resident. You're a long-term resident if you've had a green card and have been in the US for eight of the last 15 years. Before we go any further, however, I want to address a couple of misconceptions about expatriation. First, many people mistakenly believe that if you expatriate, you must continue to pay taxes to the US for the next 10 years. This is not true. Under the old expatriation rules, you had to continue to pay tax in the US as if you were still a U.S. citizen or resident in any year you spent more than a month in the U.S. This rule was changed in 2008 to the ones we'll be discussing today. Second, many people mistakenly believe that expatriating will make their old tax problems or compliance failures go away. They won't. You continue to be liable for any tax obligations that arose while you were still a citizen or permanent resident. So, what are the consequences of expatriation? There's different types of consequences. There's the tax consequences, and the other we'll call them legal consequences. I'm not gonna go into the tax consequences in detail because I have another video on that. I'll put a link to my expatriation video in the description. The short version is there's are covered expatriates and non-covered expatriates. You want to be a non-covered expatriate because covered expatriates are subject to an exit tax, which is basically a mark-to-market capital gain tax on your unrealized gains. And if you have U.S. heirs or recipients of gifts from covered expatriates, they'll be subject to gift or estate tax at the highest rate currently in effect, which is 40%. Non-covered expatriates can expatriate without these tax consequences, which is why it's better to be a non-covered expatriate. If you're interested in finding out if you're a covered expatriate or not, we've developed a helpful expatriation tax calculator tool that will help you determine if you are a covered or non-covered expatriate and estimate your expatriation tax in the event you are a covered expatriate. There's a link where you can download it in the description. Now let's take a quick look at the legal consequences of expatriation. If you're a permanent resident, the only real consequence is that you can't live in the U.S. anymore. If you are a U.S. citizen renouncing your citizenship, there are more consequences, including giving up the legal right to enter and live in the U.S., you're giving up the right to vote, you're giving up the right of the protection of the U.S. government, and you can no longer give U.S. citizenship to your children. You don't have a right to get your U.S. citizenship back either. You can get it back, but you have to go through the process like any other foreigner would have to go through. So the first thing you have to do is pre-expatriation planning. And this is figuring out, should I expatriate or not? And I actually created a video called, Should I Expatriate? And I put a link to that in the description below. This will give you some things to think about and help you decide if expatriation is right for you. Second, you need to determine if you're a covered expatriate or not. If you are, you need to engage in some pre-expatriation tax planning to see if you can get classified as a non-covered expatriate so you can avoid the exit tax as well as estate and gift tax consequences for your heirs and donees. I have a video called Expatriation Planning, Getting Out Without Getting Killed on Taxes. Again, link in the description. If you like our content, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking that subscribe button. We'd really appreciate it. And for more strategic tips on international tax and wealth planning, subscribe to our email list and follow me on LinkedIn. Links below. Once you've determined that you want to expatriate and have done your, your pre-expatriation planning, it's time to actually expatriate. If you're a permanent resident, the process is pretty simple. You just need to fill out form I-407 and mail it to the address in the instruction. If you're a citizen, renouncing citizenship, the process is a bit more involved. The first thing you need to do is get an expatriation appointment at a U.S. Embassy. This is easier said than done because many embassies have long wait times, some of them years, and some of them only accept appointments if you're a resident of that country. You may need to call several embassies to find one with a reasonable wait time that accepts appointments from people who aren't residents. U.S. embassies can set their own rules for expatriation, so the process can vary embassy to embassy, but it generally goes something like this. The embassy emails you some forms to fill out. You complete them. But don't sign them and email them back to the embassy. They review them and set up a pre-expatriation appointment call with you to make sure the forms are correct and that you understand the consequences of expatriation and that you still want to proceed. Once your formal expatriation appointment is set, you go to the embassy, you meet with a consular official, sign the forms, 
pay the fee, which is currently $2,350, and then they generally give you copies of the countersigned form. That's it, you've expatriated. At some point, usually a couple months later, you'll receive your Certificate of Loss of Nationality, or CLN, via mail. When I expatriated back in 2016, I got my CLN about 30 days later, but I know some clients have had to wait months. Your CLN is only your official confirmation of loss of nationality. You are formally expatriated and no longer a U.S. citizen, as of the date of your expatriation appointment at the embassy. Post expatriation planning. Once you've expatriated, the first thing you'll want to do is notify your banks, financial institutions, and anyone else paying you U.S. source income, like companies or partnerships that you're an owner of that you're no longer a U.S. person. You'll also need to provide them Form W-8-B-E-N. And don't forget to update your estate plan once you've expatriated since you're no longer a U.S. person. When doing so, keep in mind that you have many more options available to you now to structure your affairs because you're no longer a U.S. person. All of a sudden, trusts and foundations and tax strategies that weren't available to you as a U.S. person become available. One thing I can't stress enough is to make sure you and your family are ready for what expatriation means. I remember one instance where a covered expatriate expatriated, but his wife didn't. After a few years of leaving abroad, the expatriate was enjoying his life as an expatriate, but his wife didn't like living outside the U.S. and wanted to go back. She threatened divorce if they didn't move back to the U.S. The guy had to get a green card by investing in an EB-5 program through a qualifying investment. So after paying substantial exit tax, this guy had to invest money to get a green card, move back to the U.S. and start paying taxes on his worldwide income again. The point is, make sure you really want to expatriate and your family's on board. So there you have it. We've covered what expatriation is, what its consequences are, pre-expatriation planning, actually expatriating, and post-expatriation planning. I hope you found this video useful and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of our other informational videos.